Welcome to the Social for Brokers podcast. Today, I'm actually really excited about this episode. Um, we have someone on who I've admired from afar for a while now. And to be honest, I'm not sure why I haven't had him on the podcast before, but we've changed that today and we have Paul Travers on the show. So before I introduce him, a bit of a background to Paul. He runs Husband. So it's a company that creates content with style and substance for estate agents and mortgage brokers. It includes a plethora of different services. That's quite a big word for me, to be fair. Not yeah, services, yeah. plethora. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I got that one right. So Paul, in his own words, is a fussy perfectionist with 25 years experience in a state agency, 10 more helping other agents grow their business, an addiction to marketing, design and words. But I'll shut up for a bit and let Paul speak. So thanks so much for coming on, Paul. How are you? Oh, you're welcome. It's great to be here. I'm very, very good. Um, yeah, just in, as a, we were saying, just enjoying this London weather. Um, and uh, <laughs> so how I've many got my Factor 50 you? with me. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So Paul, is, is if you follow him on social media, he's a very big traveller. Where do you live at the moment? Uh, Bucharest, which is in Romania, for those who don't know. My mum thinks it's in Bulgaria. Uh, <laughs> and my dad thinks I'm in Bratislava, which is in Slovakia. Um, so yeah, it's one of those cities that no one, no one ever knows about. They assume Budapest when you say it. They assume I've said it wrong. Um, and um, yeah, so yes, that's it's kind of where we live. It's a bit of a, a complex answer, really. Uh, we have a base there. That's maybe that's the best way to say it. And you and your husband, hey, and your husband, yeah. Company. So you will live in. When I first spoke to you last year, I think is it every two years you decide to move? Well, I've got that. Like, well, the, like with all the best plans, those things don't really happen. So my, I had an idea. This is going back uh, to about 2009, I think, or 10. I had an idea to live in a different country every year, like, you know, spend spend a year in a city and, and go through the alphabet. You have to go A, B, C, D, E and see oh. where that took me. Right. So um, which sounds fantastic on paper and is completely unworkable in real life um, because you you can't really form connections in a city people won't think it's worthwhile connecting with you. you know, if you're going to be there for a year and you, you know you're going to go, then particularly somewhere like the Netherlands, which, which is where I went first, you know, Dutch Dutch people have very long, long, long friendships. And there's a there's a comedian, I can't remember his name now, but he did this whole thing about Dutch people. And his work colleague was trying to come to the afterworks drink with the, you know, an American colleague trying to come to the afterworks drink with the Dutch person and, and his friends. And his whole thing was, no, 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 you don't understand. Dutch people go to university, they meet their friends for life at 18 and that's it. You can't okay. just you can't just come along and <laughs> try and spend Be time with my friends <laughs> because it doesn't work like that. Um, so um, so that ended up being two and a half years. Then we went to Berlin and that ended up being five and a half years, I think. Um, and then we went to Bucharest. We weren't really sure. Um, it was a bit of an accident actually going to Bucharest. A happy one. Um, we weren't really sure, but that's been four years now. Um, but we had six months in Madrid in, in the middle of being in in Bucharest so um wow. yeah but it's but the thing is at that rate we will die before we've seen all the cities we want to see we can't stay that long um so we've <laughs> so we had this um this new idea which I think could work of basically so we'll keep our base in Bucharest um and um and then stay in Europe and then live in like a you know this city for a few months that city for a few months and and you know for maybe two or three years um, I can't travel all the time. I really love traveling, but not all the time. So have a, you know, a home that we rent for a few months, really get to grips with the city um, and then, you know, and then move on again. Um, but by staying in Europe, it means that we still have contact with our friends in, you know, Berlin, Bucharest, London, Amsterdam. It means we can, you know, we can still have a, a social life because you have to accept that you're not going to develop a social life. Um, if you go and live somewhere for two or three months, it's really... Yeah. You know, you're not going to form a really massive close friendship. They're amazing now with the internet, what you can do, you know, you can find meetups for almost every single thing and go and do really interesting things in cities. Um, and that's great. But, you know, we all know it takes a while to form friendships, but we also probably now have enough friends. I don't know if I need to make loads more. Um, it becomes quite, I hadn't really thought about it. It becomes kind of a bit unworkable sometimes when you're, you know, you're in that place um, and it's great. It's also great when you meet new people. It's really wonderful. But it's also really nice that I love being back here at the moment and being with people that I've known for 20 years, 25 years. It's it's a, it's different. Different. Yeah. So you weren't always a traveller. You were in a state agency for 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my travels then went from Croydon to London Bridge. That was that was the extent. of my... <laughs> um, So yeah, I started in, in Croydon. 
in a like a new a brand new agency actually so I'd, I'd I did it straight from school um and I didn't really know what I wanted to do but a little while before before leaving school um when I was 16 we moved house and it had been quite a protracted process because my dad the previous house he'd bought was made out of precast concrete um, and there was a whole scare about it so we had this fantastic house that people kept wanting to buy but lenders wouldn't lend on it so um and it was uh yeah it was a bit of a nightmare so he stopped paying the mortgage because the Woolwich who had he had the mortgage with they wouldn't lend other people a loan on it and they said we wouldn't touch it with the barge pole so he went well you won't want the money then will you so he stopped, <laughs> so he stopped paying the mortgage right. what are they going to do repossess a house that they won't lend on and um so uh I do get my bolshiness from my dad definitely I can hear it in my head when I'm talking sometimes oh that's my dad there um and uh, anyway eventually the government passed a law that local authorities had to buy back the house so um and and i can't think how he did it but he managed to get the woolies to pressurize lambeth council to buy the house um mm -hmm. and then uh, we moved but in all that time we'd obviously been house hunting mm -hmm. so we'd gone into quite a lot of estate agents and i had noticed that it was that it was quite fun you know mm -hmm. I, I i realized that i quite liked looking around property i hadn't considered it as a job I, but it was fun when we were going house hunting at the weekend you know i liked it and um there was a company called jackson's this is like in the 80s now, yeah. um, who later on went to be owned by the Halifax, but they they particularly had something about them. And we bought through them in the end. And I had to go into their office a few times because they were near my school. Um, you didn't have email or anything back then. So things were being you know posted or delivered. So my dad would give me things. I'd go into them. They're about a 10 minute walk from my school. I was remember thinking it was great fun. And then I just happened to open uh, the Croydon Post one day. And there was a, a, do you remember the YTS, Youth Training Scheme? Yeah. I don't know if it's still going. Um, but there was a whole thing about it and it listed all these professions and it said estate agency. And suddenly I was like, oh, that would actually be quite fun because I'd been getting stuck on the application forms for banks, which is what everyone was told to do at school. Wow. Go and work, I, want to, I want to be an astronaut. Well, go and work in a bank. Yeah, I want to be a footballer. You want to go and work in a bank. So, um, and there were these, the bits on the application form where I'd always get stuck and it would say, why do you want to work in a bank? I thought, well, I don't. I don't know why I want to work in a bank because my career's teacher says oh, so. to do it, yeah. So um, so that was it really. I I I saw it, went for an interview, then went for an interview at the yeah, so that was at the agency, then I went for an interview at the estate agency. I really liked what they were about. Um, went home, told my dad and had a massive row. <laughs> you uh, <laughs> bank. <laughs> You're not gonna work in a shop. It's not a shop, it's an office, it's a shop. Um, <laughs> and uh he'd been um setting up um, completely unbeknownst to me right what he thought i really wanted to do was an apprenticeship in the finance department of a trade union and um which is where he worked he was the head of finance for a, a trade union and um yes he'd been setting all this up and pretty much everybody in my family is is in some kind of financial thing banking finance department accounts department uh one of my uncles has worked for jp morgan as a trader or whatever so um that's a very much what my family are um so um, i guess it seemed quite natural that i would do the same thing but i really couldn't think of anything worse so um, so you went into a state agency you did that for 25 years what made you come out of it and set up husband because husband is it a relatively new company husband itself is new was last year yes. so um uh but 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 so you mean how why did i switch from say yes, state yeah. agency writing or content yeah um so i had my own business so um it was about 2005 I, me and two colleagues set up our own business and it was a new homes agency and to be frank I never enjoyed it as much as I did high street agency um and so when I was in a high street agent you know I was really I was in this fantastic area on the south bank of London selling warehouses and penthouses all along the river seeing these astonishing places it was really great I was really part of the neighborhood I was part of the local traders association I was writing for a local magazine um you know we had very we were, we were a specialist agent we were really known for stuff um, it was very fabulous and exciting. It was a real like golden period. So then, and we also started dealing with with new developments as well, which I loved mm -hmm. uh, because I could also do a lot of marketing. So I was writing the brochures for a lot of these developments that we were launching, and it was really good fun. I liked it. And um, so then, and we were good at it, and we were selling more of these new developments than say the big corporates that we were co-agenting with you know so the great big international names we would on all of these schemes we would sell more from our high street office where i had and all of the people that worked with me weren't experienced estate agents and all of the people that worked for the corporates had degrees in estate management and all of this um and all of that behind them and yet we were still outperforming them so we thought well we could do something here 
we could have a little boutique agency that dealt with architect developers and it'd be really cool but it's not really not for me anyway because suddenly i wasn't in a neighborhood anymore i was two floors up in an office um and we were dealing with a lot of london so i got to see a lot more of london property and the new builds and that was interesting but i never felt part of a neighborhood and i really like it i really like that connection with people um and then the financial crisis came i don't know if you remember this but the first thing that banks did in the financial crisis was stop lending on new build property uh, so we went from having actually built up quite a good business for two years uh to having no business overnight it was like zero but you know from a salary to no salary and um so we struggled through we switched to lettings a bit and because all the developers couldn't sell so they started letting we weren't doing lettings um so we switched to that um which was a real insight into lettings actually um and which i didn't have very much respect for until that point um i always thought lettings was very much uh, well it was then actually it's be, be fair i mean when the company i worked for on the high street you could always tell the people that worked in sales and the people that worked in lettings there was a big difference okay. um and so anyway we struggled through things started to get better we started to then relaunch schemes and whatever but yeah being truthful i never liked it as much i didn't really want to spend my life talking to property developers um it's very there's a lot of you know hard nose business and it's all things aren't clear and um they have other agendas you know that's fine i totally understand it but i don't really i don't really like talking about business actually it's not really yeah i'd, I'd much prefer talking about marketing and um like connecting with people and you know finding routes into that you know attracting people in and um all, all of that kind of stuff i've always preferred it so eventually i just owned up to myself it took a long time to do it mm -hmm. i just owned up to myself and I thought, actually i don't really want to do this but I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. But my experience in the past has always been, if you don't like where you are, just resign. Don't um, don't wait to find a new job. Don't sneak out at lunch to try and do an interview and it's like horrible. So, um, and when you're a business owner as well, that seemed a little bit immature. You know? so, um, and not that I knew, you know, it didn't really occur to me to go back, um, back to High Street Agency um, and, I might have done actually if if what happened didn't happen. So I said I want to go. I'm you know I'm, I want to. Also I wanted to go and live in foreign countries and stuff. So um, and my business partner turned around and said, well, okay, do you know what you're going to do? No. He said, well, would you continue writing, doing all the marketing and all of that for three months just so I don't have to think about it? He couldn't write. Yeah, brilliant businessman, much better businessman than me. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, just no good at, at writing, like many agents, right? So, um, and he said, there's money for you. You don't have to worry. You can start your new life, whatever you want to do. I don't have to think about it and we can carry on. So mm -hmm. I said, great. I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. And then when I told our clients the same thing, I said, I'm going to go, but you'll hear from me because I'll be doing some of the writing here. A few of them said, well, we love what you write. So why don't you just start writing for us now? Oh. And that was it. So it was really overnight. It was a, a completely unplanned um career change and it's developed you know it's moved it, it was very much new homes what i was doing at the, at the beginning and writing new homes brochures and advertising campaigns and slogans and all that sort of stuff but you know i can feel it i'm naturally more connected to estate agents than i am to property developers you know even though there are very nice ones i'm i'm re i know where i'm very comfortable and and you know where where i did really well actually and um so so and, and the knowledge i have I suppose I'm probably not as confident in the knowledge I have, you know, to like, educate property developers about selling new homes. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm as confident in that, even though we did very well. I'm very confident about, you know, ha having, you know, walk the walk for a long time. And, yeah. you know, I only ever worked in failing offices or started cold starts, but I'd never ever worked in an already successful office. I've always had to turn it around or get it going. So I know that I know a thing or two. Um, and um, so I naturally gravitated towards agents. And that's that's kind of how it all, how how it all started. Um, but that's where it started then. So what does husband offer now? What do you do on a day-to-day on -day basis? And then we'll get into how some like top tips of what you do for people and how people can enhance their online presence yeah okay so, so husband really is about um helping agents to form connections with the people in their their neighborhood you know with local sellers and landlords um so um as i say so husbands were set up last year and that came from me and my husband having a chat one lunchtime 
and that we were doing we had to answer this question on a like a workshop we were on what's the biggest block in your business and for both of us it was that we were alone we felt we were doing everything on our own he had a facebook ads agency mm-hmm. i i was doing stuff for estate agents and we had this conversation and it was like the penny dropped suddenly from nowhere it's like, why are we sitting next to each other all day every day at the same two and a half meter long desk occasionally helping each other out in their business but not working together why 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 is that we're we doing it alone yeah so uh that was it and within five minutes the name husband kind of dropped from the sky really it, and i've been searching for a name for my business for ages and i was like i wish i had a really good last name you know I'm like paul <laughs> travers medium mm, they're boring why do why can't i have like a really great you know you know there's like scott gunn who's in a estate agent yeah, yeah. yeah great name and it's scott gunn media fantastic um but um i didn't have that name and i was i've been irritated for several years i couldn't think of a decent <laughs> my, name. my best friend um, is, um, he's called maurice costello really and say his name and think you could you could have a coffee shop you could have a clothing brand you, yes. know, you could use that name for absolutely it it's like axel arigato the trainers that you see that's absolutely beautiful i don't think it's a real name but it just it speaks to you yeah but i think the husband is it's it's short sharp straight to the point um and also, it's so as as your partner you know kind of as like your you know your like to some uh, like a company to form a long-term relationship with and to be your partner it all just it all just kind of seemed to fit really, really, as all things do, you know? So maybe yeah. it was just meant to be. So what while. do you do at Husband then? What are the services that you offer? How do you help people? So we have um, a content service for estate agents. Um, so that's kind of like the, 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 like the way we, the way estate agents kind of come to us really. Mm-hmm. Um, so they subscribe to content. If they're a sales or a letting agent, there's a, there's a new article that comes out every two weeks for each one so some agents subscribe to both so they get a new article every week Mm -hmm. um but mainly it's an article every two weeks um and then that is they're they're designed in a way that they can be repurposed um across their social media so they all come with about 20 20 images and a few video slideshows so anything from tiktok and instagram reels to regular instagram posts twitter your facebook banner your linkedin banner all of that so you get a whole coordinated campaign across everything um and the idea being that you intersperse those with the stuff that your estate agent is is putting out there mm-hmm. but of course what became apparent was that estate agents aren't putting much out there so a lot of their feeds were just filling with just our content and it's like oh, no that's not that's not going to work in fact that's going to that's going to really go against you because just static posts even though they it looks beautiful and it's you know it's got great tips not enough mm-hmm. so we started running weekly zoom sessions now like like group calls for agents and we'll take like a topic each week and we'll concentrate on it so last week we did uh email newsletters and kind of you know what to put in them why you need why you should have them and you know how to how to make them you know a snappy headline so you don't just say december's newsletter um because no one's going to open that um and um before that we did sort of stopping the scroll you know how to write a scroll stopping post you know talking about headlines or images and and things like that um this week we're going to do i think this week we're just going to do some ready-made posts so like okay we'll do six six posts that you can schedule on this call right now that will you know be little red gaps in them where you fill in the the the, the bit that's yep, relevant yeah. to your neighborhood and we'll have written all the rest of the text so you don't have to do anything um so and they also have ideas from estate agents i think from the first two calls with estate agents we had five ideas for new blogs to supply to because so, you're, you're talking to the people that that are on the front line aren't you yeah i mean, i could write all day long as i could write you know 25 years it like being frank it hasn't changed that much you know people have yeah. the same concerns same worries same problems uh the uh conveyancing process is almost identically archaic to when i last <laughs> yeah. yeah um and so yeah so i i can write all sorts of stuff from yeah from from the point of view of being an estate agent trying to help the people out there um so that's great but then it just became apparent that the agents themselves needed some more help some real like hands-on help with okay well why don't you do this rather than me just you know taking their money sending them a blog and then leaving them to it mm. it became clear that that's not enough but also for me that's actually been really nice because it means i get to talk to people um yep. and yeah i love it you know i love you may get this from this call i quite like to chat and um <laughs> it's really nice to have a chat with people and a lot, a lot of them i'd never seen face to face i knew what they looked like yeah but I've never had a face-to-face call with them because sometimes you just talk on um on the phone, phone so, and, and they sign and up that way. 
I mean, it leads us perfectly into kind of the social media section of the, the podcast. It's interesting when you said you, you gave them content to go and put out there, but what you were finding is that was the only thing that was being uploaded. And it's yeah. very similar to what I speak to my clients about. We're there to create your branded content. We're there to create the eye-catching imagery and the, the content for you. Take that off your hands, but you need to have that, the personal content interspersed, the, the photos of you in the office, talking about a personal experience because that's what makes you relatable you can't just post the business post can you You need a mix of both yeah and you can't outsource your personality um exactly. you can't um you know i've i've done i, w- I will also say a like lot in in the past i don't do it now i don't know whether we'll do it again but for a while i was actually managing the social media accounts for a few agents mm-hmm. um and it really tried our relationship actually because i couldn't get from them uh, I couldn't even get a picture. I was like, you don't need to write anything, right? I've done your job. I know what you're doing. All you need to do is tell me where you are. Just send me a, like, send me a selfie and tell me where that living room is that you're standing in. I will do yeah. everything else for you. Right? You don't have to make anything up. I'll do it all for you. Even then, right, taking all that work off them, even then, I still couldn't get it. Hard to get it. Um, so, um, and I was tearing my hair out. And Patrick, my husband, was going, you don't need this hassle. Like, you know, it's like, I don't know, I don't know what they were paying for, £500 a month. Um, and in a way, it was money for nothing because I couldn't pose for them. But it was um, it was kind of proving quite a, a bone of contention because I was saying, well, where's the post? I'm like, well, I don't know what you're up to. You only need to snap yourself on your phone and send it to me. You need to do so little but if you can't do it, then, you know, we've got a problem. So I stopped in the end. I thought, I yeah. don't want to do that. But I also don't want to abandon them. So, and it's interesting how your business then has to evolve. It's like, okay. Um, so I, I can see that we'll probably do more of this now where we'll do, uh, we'll start writing the template for the posts. Yeah. And then you can just fill it like, up. You know, our blogs have this, you know, they'll they'll have a bit about, you know, the, um, but for, for instance, just the contact details, you know, or there might be a bit about saying, you know, landlords in, Berkhamsted, yeah. feel the same yeah. as everybody else in the country. So, you know, these tiny little placeholders. But I think we'll probably move into offering that as well and saying, okay, you know, here's how to get your you know, your personal content and really make it super duper easy for them because clearly they're struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, th- th- it's no good me tearing my hair out, but it's also no good me doing anything because that will just, all that will happen is the client list will go go down. You'll have less clients because they will go, well, we're not going to get anything out. Of the, we're not getting anything out of the content. And you're going, yeah, but you're not getting anything out of it because you're not doing anything else. Yeah. And they're like, well, we're not going to change. So we may as well not pay for the content. And that would be the natural route to that. Um, so it's about making sure that they have all, all they need um, to use their content well and, and to be able to you know use it time and time again because people look at things in different ways, right? You know, some people, I don't look at social media personally. You know, I don't I only look at it from my client's point of view, see, you know, whether our stuff is actually being, because we upload it for them as well, right? So, because that makes sense. Yeah. So we just yeah. thought, okay, we'll just upload it for you. It's, you know, so I have, a, I have a VA who basically does nothing but upload our stuff and schedules it across, you know, however many weeks or whatever. So um, that's great. So, but it's, yes, it's just, I've lost my train of thought somewhere, but um, it's all about that. We were just talking about how important it is to have that mix of the personal content. And Paul, Paul, you're talking about having a selfie and doing like the written copy and it's polish and everything, but there's no substitute. If, if you haven't got the funds to be able to outsource to a social media person, just make sure you're uploading the odd selfie or you're uploading something about the team in the office to break up that business. Yeah. Five minutes a day. Yeah, that's all you need. That really, really, that is all you need. Five minutes a day would do it. Um, and with a, you know, with a scheduler, if you use a, a tool, we use um, Social Boo because you can schedule stories as well as posts on Instagram. Okay. So it kind of, you know, it's useful. Um, but if you did that, if you gave your admin assistant five five selfies at the beginning of a week, which could be from last week, they don't have to all be from today. Yeah. I think that's a, where people get stuck. Or what am I going to say today? I need to be doing something interesting today. And so, well, no, you don't. Don't worry about that. Just, you know, you can post about something that where you were last week. It's really okay. Um, and, um, but if you just gave that job to somebody, then it's done. It's done, you, yeah. you, done at the beginning of the week. And I'm as guilty as anybody else for not following through on that advice. You know, it's not like uh, I'm perfect, right? So there have been times when I've been really good on social media, then I completely, completely fell off the wagon between September last year and January this year. 
Mm -hmm. I just was dealing with other stuff and um, like a cockroach infestation at our flat in Bucharest while we were in Madrid (laughs) um, and trying to manage that with Airbnb guests, which was interesting. Um, And uh, there was just all, and and other things that were going on. And it it was like, oh, and then I I didn't even realize I'd stopped. And then Mm -hmm. suddenly I was like, oh, actually that needs to be sorted out. So I totally get it. Um, I really do. And I, you know, I feel the pain and I understand the struggle, Um, but it's, um, there is no substitute for your face or your dog or your child um, or yes. a seller's dog or a seller's child um, and um, you know and or a, or a glorious interior somewhere um, with you infusing about it and, and or somewhere in your neighborhood you know like somewhere that you really love going for your coffee every morning before you go to work or where you love writing your descriptions because it's a great environment or whatever you know recommending people is so it's so easy Mm-hmm. very easy to recommend a you know a, a, a place you like you do it to a friend um so um I just yeah trying to help them trying to help them see that that it doesn't have to be this like constant branding exercise and that everything has to be super glossy and um just so because actually it really it really doesn't no you need, you need that mix don't you yeah so that's covered social media and the importance of, of that mix of content I'd like to speak to you about blog posts and mm-hmm. how important it is to upload relevant blog posts. Yeah, well, so there are two things really. Obviously, there's being discovered on on the internet, mm-hmm. um, and so you your blogs and SEO. And whatever. SEO is an interesting conversation because like I'm I am an SEO skeptic and also an SEO believer. Like, so I know what it can do, but I can't stand it when people are writing posts for SEO because it's like a robot wrote it. Um, yeah. and you can tell, and you actually don't need it. You can, you know, by, um, by, by constantly putting stuff out there, um, that is, that is relevant to your area. You don't need a whole SEO campaign around it to get found. Right. Um, and also I wouldn't really rely on waiting for my website to get found to grow my business. I think that's just not a very good strategy. Um, so there is obviously there's the, there's, there's what the content is, is in it. So basically stuff that makes people's life easier, um, and, um, helps them make more money for their house, helps them navigate the moving process, deals with a concern, helps them to avoid a pitfall they might not otherwise have known, you know, and really shares the things that you're coming across as an agent, which, as I say, you know, talking to agents in one, two, three, four countries, Wales, Scotland, England, Ireland, they've all got the same stuff going on, right? Whether they're dealing with, you know, whether it's a fine and country um, dealing with, you know, multi-million pound houses or whether it's someone in Cornwall selling, you know, little 150, 200,000 pound cottages or whatever, exactly the same stuff is going on. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, that's a real interesting eye opener as well you know like everyone has the same issues so, do you use um, um, a website called answer the public at all occasionally um so i I'm, just thought it'd be a useful tip at all for some people if you're struggling to think about what to write yeah, about if you're struggling to think about what to write about then go then go to that i don't i'm not blowing my own trumpet but i have a whole list of things that i yeah. could just write about from you know having been an agent and, and and all the stuff that goes on plus what our clients tell us is happening um that that isn't really a a, a problem i don't really need to research anything because mm. I, I lived it so um it's all it's all there and um and mo- you know, most agents say oh it's like you know exactly what i was thinking and it's like well yeah because kind you of were didn't. an estate agent uh, for 25 yeah, years yeah yeah and, what, and what we got um, it's like when you're researching, you know, I don't know whether people know this, but most when you search for something on Google, most of the time Google will send you to a blog to answer that question because they're the only things that do answer questions, you know, like a, a yeah. sales page and about us page, a meet the team page that doesn't answer the question, you know, who at my local yeah. estate agent likes playing netball? No one asks that question, right? So that's like the, that's not a question that comes up. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you, it's really worth looking at, you know, whenever you're looking up, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, uh, how to upscale, I'm looking at my friend's terrible shelving, how to upscale a knackered old shelf, it will take you to some enthusiast blog about it. Um, It just will. So, um, so Google likes sending people to blogs. So you're on a winner. If you start, if you start doing that, Um, nobody really is searching for your about us page. Um, or all of that it's great that they're there and when people get to your website that's it but your best chance of google sending you somewhere is going to be your blog because a home page won't answer it um the property search page won't answer it you know none of none of those pages do i think that gets lost 
somewhere actually um and so that's a really good reason to have one um but also when people are at your website and the way you present your blog is, is also a, a thing that matters if your blog looks like a fantastic library of insight expertise and useful stuff um that's really beautifully presented you know good strong imagery and you can use your own listings for your imagery if you've got good listings we use the images you know you have them mm -hmm. taken um but like really good strong imagery and you kind of give it the feel of a you know if you were reading like a uh, an interior design magazine or like a really nice article on property in uh, uh, the Sunday Times or something. Loads of images. It's all broken up. You know, it looks really nice. You, you imagine if you're just a wall of text. If you open the Sunday Times and it was two pages of text, it was all the same size. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't stick yeah. with it. So you can you can create this really very nice library um, that really shows people what you're about and that you care. Um, you have something to say, you have experience and knowledge, expertise, um, and that you have an attention to detail. So there are all these things that come from it, plus, of course, all the repurposing possibilities. There's not much that you can repurpose in the way that you can repurpose a blog, I don't think. I can't think so of much content. Added. And I'm glad you touched on that then, because I was about to say you were talking about the Google capabilities and people finding your website. But... For me, if there was a local estate agent and their website had up to date content on there about what was going on in the world, and I saw that they released a blog this week, I think, well, they're actively trying to better their business and trying to inform their clients with blog posts. Whereas if I go to a website that isn't responsive on a mobile phone and they haven't uploaded anything for three years, yeah. are they one, are they still in business because of COVID? You then think, have they just shut it down and left it? Or two, are they actually genuinely interested in the property market? I'd yeah. much rather go to the person that has that up-to-date content on there. Yeah, and, and all that's going on in every one of those cases is the agent's busy. That's why they're blogging yeah. today. They're busy um, and they haven't got time to, to write it or think about it or whatever, which is that, again, that's normal um, from multi-million pound agencies to, to, you know, little workers' cottages. It's totally, totally normal. But yeah, I think the only thing worse than not having a blog is having one where the last post was three years ago. Yep. That's, that's the, <laughs> avoid neglect, you know, like if you're not going to do anything, if you're genuinely not going to do anything, then just delete it, get rid yeah. of it. Um, anything that looks neglected on your site isn't going to help you assuming that you want the best listings assuming that yes. you want really good listings not everyone does i got told off for that on an advert i did once <laughs> someone said what's wrong with second rate property and I, and I hadn't really ever thought about it but i was like well i'm nothing i suppose you know if you're yeah. happy then um super duper that that's yeah. great i you know um i don't really have any content to write about attracting second rate property so um that's we're in separate worlds but um if you do want to get um uh good stuff you know the stuff that looks nice that has great photos you know the photos you get the photos you have attract the property you're going to get right if you've got yeah. good looking listings then you're going to get more good looking listings if you've got horrible photography and terrible looking listings then you're going to get people that don't really care about that and that won't be the people that have spent lots of money making their house look nice that will be other people and the market's totally valid right you know if you're yeah. happy in that market i don't want to say to anybody um Oh, you know, you're less of an estate agent, or you matter less, or your your life is worth less because you're taking that sort of property on. Um, but I think a, a, a lot of, I wonder whether a lot of agents feel they're a bit trapped in that. You know, and they see other agents getting all the great listings, um, mm -hmm. and they feel a bit trapped in that area. And that's not, you know, as I say, having only ever gone to areas where I had to stay in that area, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 some terrible, terrible places, um, terrible offices. I know that, that that can turn around quite quick by how you present yourself and the, the homes you're marketing you know it's a very quick win on, yeah. on that so we talked about blog posts there so if you've got the estate agency or you've you've got your website you want to be uploading content but what we're going to talk about now in the strategy is we're going to pretend that you've moved to the north of scotland you've got a laptop a mobile phone and an internet connection what would you do to start generate new leads in 60 seconds Oh, it's, you didn't say 60 seconds on your, <laughs> on your thing, because I've actually, I'm been, unlike me, right, I hate planning. I'm not, a, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, I have a creative brain and I have ideas, but I cannot stand planning. But for this call, I you plan. It. Right? So right you then, I'll give you more than 60. Very honoured. So the, but the quick question I had is, do I have any money to spend on this or have I got to do it for free? For free. Okay, fine. All right, I've got to do it for free. Okay, so um, in no particular order, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I would 
start posting to Facebook groups because they have the, the biggest reach of everything. So I'd start okay. posting useful stuff to Facebook groups. Um, I would comment on the posts of popular local businesses, say, I love your place, because then I could piggyback on their following, which would undoubtedly be more than mine. Um, I'd post stuff about my neighborhood, what I love about it, where I go and my favorite places. And I would ask people where their favorite place is in the neighborhood. Um, I would post about the street, not my favorite streets necessarily, but I would post about the buyer's favorite streets and why right. they're their favorites. Um, so why do buyers love this street? Um, how much money they're paying and maybe how much they would have paid for a year ago or two years ago. So, you know, and, and why they're doing that, which might be because it's in a school catchment area or five minutes walk from the station or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I would do then and now. People love a then and now. So, you know, particularly if there's like a, there was a glorious old Odeon 1930 cinema in your neighborhood that now would either be a bingo hall or maybe a Waitrose. Um, or maybe not there at all, um, mm. but that kind of stuff. So anything like high street buildings, businesses, businesses that have been there for decades, you know, mm. would be quite interesting. Plus house prices, you know, what, what they are today, what they were then. Um, dogs and kids, I'd get them in somewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> favorite rooms rather than new instruction. So start talking about favorite living rooms that I've sold um, or that I've loved showing people around uh, mm -hmm. where they were. Um, and then I would make videos that, that made a difference to people's lives. So I would, what I'm trying to encourage our agents to do is make videos out of our blogs. So um, I spend, this is the, where the fussy pernickety thing comes in, right? I spend ages and ages going back over and over and over the blog, reading out loud. Does it sound like I'm talking or does it sound like I'm writing? Right. Okay. It sounds like I'm talking so people can effectively read it. And one of our clients in Scotland has a property show every week. And they just read out the blog and talk about it. So uh, video repurposing right? content. Really? So that's a big thing is repurposing content, isn't it? Yeah, massive yeah. because it saves you so much time. Just saves you so much time, and you can say so you can reach people. Not everyone is on Facebook is, is on Instagram. Not everyone who has social media necessarily pays it that much attention, um, and they might respond better to an email newsletter. They might actually like blogs. You know, I don't believe everyone has a short attention span. Look mm -hmm. at the amount of time that people dedicate to scrolling through social media um, or Netflix. Um, even trashy films are longer than they've ever been. You know, you go and see an Avengers film, it's nearly three hours long. So that's, <laughs> people stay for it. They, people stay, they don't walk out in the middle of it, I've had enough, it's five minutes. Um, so I think that can get a bit, you know, uh, that conversation can get a bit, oh, nobody has any attention to detail or nobody has any um, uh, any attention span anymore. I don't, I don't believe it. Um, yes, yeah, so things that, yeah, help them get more money, bust a busting myths. That's a good one. Okay. You know, say something that people would expect that like, you need to paint your house neutral colors if you want to sell it. Because what? Because property buyers are incapable of dealing with color. Only interior designers and people selling are capable of dealing with color. Um, but once you're a buyer, suddenly beige is the only thing you're <laughs> able to see. Um, so but that is a very big thing. But so trying to find things, you know, like that um, and um, that, that would surprise people. And then I'd take them behind the scenes of what I was doing every day so um i could give you a formula very quickly if i still have time yeah go for it yeah let's finish yeah, the okay. formula so well I i've got two now because one for agents one for brokers because i had to come up with another one so for agents what i recommend is a formula called flash f-l-a-s-h so f is follow our day l is local life a is archives and anniversary so historic sales and prices and whatever s is for sneaky peaks and success stories and h is for home tips and truths so that would be a really varied, imagine if you did that every week, one yeah. of each, still leave you two days left over for a weekend dog and kid post. <laughs> um, so, um, so that was what I was, that's what I recommend to agents. So for brokers, I had to come up with one. I was like, oh, what would be a really good thing for brokers? So I came up with one called Bills. I tried okay. home and I tried rates, but I couldn't, the acronym wasn't working for what I got. So be behind the scenes. And it's basically like, you know, your team, Prep, prepping a mortgage case, admin, research, you know, staying up to date on the local rate, latest rates. I don't know how brokers do that all the yep. time. But um, I for inside track. So that would really be using your blog as tips and giving people like a real inside view on, you know, a particular theme. So, you know, like I think the last blog we wrote for brokers was about self-employed mortgages. The one before that was mortgages in retirement. Um, nice. And they're all divided up. So you could like do a themed week. This week is retirement mortgages week or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, L for local life, L again for lending updates and criteria, because that changes so much. I think it's very different for people um, now to, you know, even a few years ago. And then S for storytelling and success. So, so that builds. So if you, if you, 
bills. Yeah. Just listen to that, rewind it, and go and take some notes on that because that that gives you four or five days worth of content. You don't even have to think about it, it's there. It, it's just having those signposts, isn't it, to create that content? But everything you spoke about, like the Facebook groups, commenting on local pe- um, on local businesses posts, piggybacking the audience, talking about the local area, those are all things that I'm huge advocates of. It's that's the best way to win on social at the moment, I think. Well, it's being social. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Funny it's called social media. The <laughs> media. Lou is, in the, <laughs> Lou is in the title. Um, so yeah, but and, and also just um yeah, having one of the things that just you know, talking about that, like recommending local people, one of the things that that in one, two, three of the agents I worked in that were really set us apart. And I do some of this now with agents and we might expand this part of our business. I don't know. It takes a lot of work, but I really love them actually is actually producing a local magazine could be online, could be in print um, where you interview local businesses and you feature them. Um, It's great when it's online, of course, because then you can link the article to your um, all over your social media. Right. Right. And then they tag you, you know, and you give them a template of text to tag you. Thanks very much to Blah Agency for the lovely interview. Really very kind. If you want to see it, then go and check out their website here. Um, the kind of amount of reciprocal business I've had, you know, personally as an estate agent from people who have never used me as an estate agent, but have nonetheless recommended me because I recommended them. Um, and I'm, I wrote about them or, or sent someone their way is enormous. Um, People love to help each other. I think we forget that in business, don't we? We think that everybody else is, it's a cutthroat business, whereas actually people just want to help each other. Yeah. And very often they're not unsociable people, estate agents, but very often they are quite isolated in Mm -hmm. their, in in their business community. You know, then therefore for various reasons, not for not wanting to be involved. I just think for not really being sure what to, you know, what what to do and how to get involved. But they are quite isolated. But if you can do things um, that um, that really show that you you're really part of the love. The, the last thing I wrote actually for our husband blog was, "Does your agency show the love?" And it was all about ways that you can show the love in your community. It was basically saying Valentine's Day isn't just one day a year, or, or love isn't about you know one day a year. You yeah. can do it all year round, and you can show all sorts of things about how you love where you are and what you're doing and the people you're with. Um, And that sort of thing is infectious enthusiasm for your neighborhood rather than just yourself Mm -hmm. um, is really, really infectious. And uh, you can't be, it's really not very difficult to get people going. Yes. I love it there too. Yeah. It's not hard. Um, And um, I can't really recommend it highly enough really, but I, I love, there's one agent where we do a really big one. It's about 16 pages now. That big broadsheet, phenomenal local um, magazine. And they've got a really great website for it. And then we've got this big broadsheet thing that comes out twice a year. It's because uh, it's mammoth to do, right? Because there's a lot more work getting it from online to in print, you know, and it all needs to suddenly fit and the right word count and whatever. But it has, they just completely dominate their marketplace and we started it with a one piece of paper one it was it wasn't really wow, much it's just paper. grown grown from there it's just grown um but even with the one piece of paper one i look at it now and i'm like oh it's really basic it looks really <laughs> funny and basic but but if you compare it to what most agents are doing it's like the, it's still really futuristic that thing um and you don't need to have doesn't need to be a 16 page you know broadsheet but if you do something yeah in your neighborhood and you can start getting some traction on it um, and showing people that you care, then yeah, it's a, I think it's a really great way. I think also for yourself, it's really nice to feel part of your neighbourhood, really involved and um, really, really part of it, and and to be seen as pushing it. Um, and of course, only one agent can do it in an area. You can't have every yeah. agent having a yeah. local magazine or whatever. So um, once you've once you've done it, um, nobody will follow. That they'll they'll all just go, oh, that's a shame. We didn't be, be, the, be the leader. Yeah, that great way to finish. Thank you so much for coming on, Paul. There's loads in that strategy. What I would recommend is rewinding this podcast, going back to the beginning where I asked that question, and take a take a note of all of those um, all of those tips that Paul's given away. All right, thanks, Paul. Thank you so much for coming on. As a thank you, I'd like to donate ten pounds to a charity of your choice. Which charity? Yes, um, I'm choosing Ginkgo Music. Um, so Ginkgo Music is uh, an environmental charity that um, produces. Uh, cds um, albums and donates a percentage of it to rainforest uh, projects in ecuador 
Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, it's I had something to do with it many years ago, but I don't anymore. Um, but I was there at the very, very beginning. And it's it's, uh, it's really interesting watching how long it takes to get a charity going and how long it takes to get people to, re you know, artists to record a song and get them into a studio and all of that. But it's a really, um, it's a nice little charity and they're just getting underway now with their album. And it's really, yeah, so it's great to be able to, to do something for them. Fantastic. I'll make a donation to them. Thank you very much for coming on, Paul. And if you want to connect with Paul, you're all over LinkedIn, aren't you? Probably the, the yeah, best you can place. get me on LinkedIn or um Instagram, husband.digital on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and uh it's very interesting actually that I'm re realizing while talking to you that it's very, very, very interesting for me to kind of go, oh, actually, I'm not I'm not following through on that bit of my advice. So um I will I will do that's great sometimes. You know, you do this. It's like, oh yeah. That's something that I've. Um, I should I've take that advice myself. And <laughs> yeah, um, hey, we all do that, I suppose. So uh, we're all we're all busy, busy. Busy. Paul, thank Wonderful. you so much for coming thank on. You. And, uh, we'll thank catch you. you. Soon. See you. Cheers.